Dealing with colors in Quasar is really easy. I think you're going to love it. And a lot of it we've already explored in this video series, but we're going to dig a little bit deeper. So if I come in here to our menu section and we go to layouts, let's jump into the main layout. We're going to play around with colors, especially with this section here. So close that off, control KB. And let's see if we can find an icon, Q dash icon. Here we go. So we can jump into this shopping icon and change the color to something like red. You've already seen me do this. But just to give you a little bit more info here, if we say dash one, that is the brightest version of red that we have available to us by default. And it goes all the way up to 10. But then we have some more variants of red. So if we go 11, 12, 13, and then 14, we actually have a few variations of red and 15 doesn't exist, so 14 is the limit there. Now there are some, for example, brown, that only go up to 10. So if I try and say 11 here, that's not actually going to do anything. So that's one way that we can use colors that you've already seen. And this pattern, you'll see it all over the place with Quasar components. So it's very easy to style just about any component in Quasar by just adding in color. Okay, so, if we scroll to the top of the page now, there's another one that we've looked at, which is the background color. So by default, this Q header uses our primary color for its background, and that's why it's showing up blue here. However, if I say class is equal to background dash orange, then we get an orange background there. And then of course, we have the entire spectrum, where we can say like two or five, whatever. So we've got that power available to us for background colors. Now, of course, we also have all of these colors for text colors as well. So if I search for Q-item-section, here we go. We've got our lists and scrolling down a bit further, we've got our shopping list. So let's change the color of this. Class is equal to text-green. And there we go, changes the text for us. And one thing that I actually like to do is say gray dash nine so it feels black but it's just a little bit easier on the eyes if you add a gray nine here oh that should be text dash gray nine yeah you can vaguely see that it makes it slightly lighter which makes it easier on the eyes to read a little bit softer and it's, it's just a nicer design as well in my opinion so let's have a look at styling some components as well and to do that i'm just going to throw a few components down here so we have the checkbox component. Let's use that as an example to begin with. Q dash checkbox, and we'll give that a color equal to, how about secondary? That's going to choose our secondary color. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So we can also say green, purple, have a play around with that and see what you've got available to you. We've also got, for example, let me just show you some other components, the Q input component, which gives it a purple line underneath. We've also got, the QDate component. This is just a great opportunity for me to show off some of Quasar's components. So this is a really cool component. And once again, adding the word purple just gives you that slight purple design. And since we're on the topic of components, we also have a color component as well, which allows you to very easily select a color and model a piece of data that will then give you whatever color you've selected within here. So this is really cool. And all of this functionality is just out of the box and it's extremely configurable as well. So you can hide and show these different ways of picking colors. You can change the color palette and do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Moving on, let's get rid of that. And we're going to open up our file browser and jump into CSS. And let's have a look at quasar.variables.scss. So this is a place where we can change our default colors. For example, if I hover over this, my editor allows me to very quickly change this. Let's make that more of a pinky color. And look at what happens when I save the file now. All of my primary colors have now changed to this pinky color. How cool is that? So anywhere that I'm using primary, it's now using this new color. And we could change this one, for example, to something that's green. And I think that this one is using that green color. So let's give it a moment. And there we go. So that's using the primary color is for the header section here. And then this green color is going to show up for anything we set to secondary. 
And then we have accent, which is a way to just make certain items within your app pop. So you can make that like a really loud color if you'd like. And of course, a few others that are a common CSS colors that you might want to use. So now would be a good time to work on the brand colors for our website. If we go to quasar.dev, and I need to click on Quasar version 2 beta, but you might not have to by the time this video has been released. So let's jump into there. And I'm gonna to come to this tool section here and click on theme builder. And this is just a really nice way to work on theming your application. So I'm gonna change the primary color here equal to one that I prepared earlier, which is C06384. 6384. There we go. And I'm just gonna do the secondary and accent as well. I'm not gonna do all of these ones down here, but you can go ahead and change those and tweak them if you would like. The secondary, 26759A, 26759A. And then for our accent color, I have 2246C9, 2246C9. Oh, I missed it, 2246C9. And there we go. Once you've decided on your colors here, and you've got this page here to sort of see if it all works out in different scenarios, you can click on export. And I'm now going to click on SCSS because notice we have an SCSS file here. And then copy, select everything in this file, paste it in there. And now let's have a look and see how that works out. Back to our app. And there we go. That is the theming for our website. How unbelievably cool is that? So now I can close out of this, and there's a couple more things that I wanna show you before we finish this video up. First, we're going to jump into index.view, and I'm going to add a style section here, which I almost never do in a Quasar app because I never feel the need to, but there are some situations where you might want to add your own styling in, especially if you really like to take control over the styling of your website. So we can add in there the language of SCSS, and what's going to happen is Quasar will automatically make all of our colors available to us within this style tag if the language is set to SCSS. I'll show you what I mean. Let's have a page-background class, and then we'll say background-color, and then change this to dollar sign $blue-3, for example. So this is a variable that's been made available to us through Quasar. And now if I use that page background up here at the top, page dash background, notice that it takes on that color. And we can come in here and change this to something like green. And maybe that could be a seven. That actually looks kind of nice, doesn't it? <laughs> Not bad. And we can make it primary. So then it'll kind of blend in with, those, with the rest of the pink colors. Yeah, so that's just a little bit of um, extra styling knowledge that you might want to know. The fact that you've got all of those variables injected for you. We could even use stuff like accent or danger, I think is one of them. Okay, maybe not danger, negative. Yeah, that's the one. So all of this is available to us within our style tag if the language is set to SAS or SCSS. So let's get rid of that because I don't actually need it. And we'll get rid of that up there. And a quick little tidbit here. I've been working on a Quasar app at work all day, every day for about three and a half years now. And after all that time, I've written about 10 lines of CSS. Sometimes I use style tags, but apart from that, I've written about 10 lines of CSS and just haven't needed to write any CSS myself because all of the utility classes that Quasar has available tend to cover all of my use cases. So I highly recommend getting familiar with a lot of Quasar's utility classes. Um, and trying to solve a lot of your problems with the utility classes because then you can develop a lot faster in the future and it makes it very easy to then onboard new people because then they can just follow the Quasar docs for utility classes. I've honestly been blown away by how well thought out Quasar's utility classes are. Anyway, I want to wrap this video up with one last trick. If I come down here and then say import colors and we're going to import that from Quasar, we actually have a whole library of functions, utility functions for dealing with Quasar's colors. So now I can say, for example, const, and we're gonna pull something out of colors. And there's one here, I think it's called like get, there we go, get palette color. Now, if I say here, 
mounted. We're just going to console.log, get palette color and pass through blue. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me the blue color. So if I open up my console here, it's going to give me the hash for the blue color that Quasar has available to us. So there it is there. That's the hex version of the blue color. And if I add in there dash nine, for example, that's going to give us blue dash nine. There are quite a few edge cases where you might want to use this utility function here. And one last thing I wanted to note is the reason I'm pulling get palette color out of colors like this is that helps with tree shaking. Ignore this number here. This is not showing what the true file size is because it's not um, smart enough. But basically we're saying, hey Quasar, I want all of the colors, but only pull out this utility function from the colors library, which means this will be tree shaken and all of the other functions within colors will be ignored. So this just keeps our file size nice and small. All right, so that's all that I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And now you are a master with colors and you'll be able to use them all over your site, however you desire. So let's just close out this mounted section here. Get rid of these two lines of code. So we're ready for the next video.